Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the upside down, amazing Hispano Aviation Ultimatum Aircraft. This is video number six in the build series. Uh, we're making some amazing progress. We're almost done this aircraft, but stay tuned and we will continue with the Hispano Aviation Ultimatum. All right guys, last video we got lots accomplished. Gear doors progressed, afterburner light installed, uh, engine back in, tank back in. It's now time to continue moving forward in the aircraft. So we still have all of our equipment installation, but a big focus of this video is gonna be revolving around the gear doors. So we're gonna make the front gear door. We're gonna start spraying the main gear doors or priming them to get them smooth. And that is our focus. So. Let's make the front gear door. All right, so we got our gear door for the front cutout. We're following the exact same process as the other one. And uh, because this is a longer door, um, I may add some more material to this, or I may put a layer of carbon on the back. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two layers of our three quarter ounce glass cloth on the outside surface. We'll uh, let that cure for 24 hours, see how stiff it is, and uh, then we may, may put carbon on the back side. So anyways, following the same process for that. And we are also working on our nose uh, servo. Uh, steering and everything. So uh, just getting this set up. Now generally what happens with, um, I find with the electrons is you get better geometry if the servo is mounted like that. Now these MKS servos, they've got a little uh, reinforcer uh, piece right there in the center. Hopefully you can see that right there. And uh, what I do is just take an X-Acto blade, cut that off. And then when we put it through on this side, the geometry actually works out way better. And uh, then we can use a clevis going from surface or control horn to control horn. And then it's just nice and straight and simple. And then also, as I mentioned previously, we got our jumper wire installed here. So this just needs to be a positive negative. So that goes from the brake in and jumps over to the steering in. And then our nose servo plugs into the steering out port. All right, so we're just getting our uh, steering servo set up here and I figured I would show you guys this because um, I think this is possibly an often overlooked spot. So um, the servo mount here on the electron retracts, you gotta make sure you take uh, everything off and put some Loctite on those Phillips screws. If you don't, this is definitely gonna come loose. I've, from experience, I've seen it happen. And um, anyway, so just, just remember to do that. Uh, there's a uh, shot of the servo installed there. Um, I like using the rubbers on the steering servo. Not totally necessary, but in some cases like this, it does actually help with lining everything up so it's perfectly straight. And it's also not a bad idea with uh, vibration from the steering. So anyways, we're gonna take those screws out, lock tight them, and then we'll start working on getting our servo uh, and steering system set up. All right, guys, so we've got everything set up here. Uh, a great setup, golden clevis to golden clevis, and a nice little section, a short section of 440 rod. And you can see here, everything lines up perfectly. So we've got, um, uh, yeah, everything's pretty straightforward. This is Loctited on the, uh, the factory flat spot. And then what I'll do at this point now is to lock this all in place. I'll take a little bit of uh, thin CA and we'll just wick that into the threads. Making sure that I get it into the little clevis section there that has the joiner piece. There we go. Soak up the excess. A little bit of kicker and now what happens is those clevises are now locked and they're in a perfect spot. And uh, there we go. So no play anymore in that. And uh, we are set. So what I'll do now is um, we know which way our leg needs to go on. So 
what I'll do is I will get the legs set up. Um, it's fairly straightforward on the front section here because you've got nice flat spots on the steering arm for the electrons. So you can basically get the, uh, the leg set up with the flat meeting the flat and you know exactly where it's going to be. And then I'll tighten these screws down, uh, make my little mark on the pin, and then we will uh, add a little flat spot with a Dremel. All right, so while we've got good access to the nose, what I'm going to do is get the uh, pitot tube, which is, according to Jetty, the M-speed sensor, um, installed in the aircraft. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this poking out of the nose, and uh, just to show you that it works here, we've got it all set up and plugged in. And there we go. So uh, that's easy to install. Just gonna put a little hole in the front section and uh, we'll get this uh, fixed probably underneath the board just so we don't have to add any extensions here and we've got lots of uh, lead with our, uh, our silicone airline. So we're gonna get that installed and uh, that'll be the next step. Okay, so we got our M-Speed sensor all mounted, super simple, and uh, ran the line on this side. The reason I ran it on this side is because we're gonna do our gear door and everything on this side. Now, the only reason I'm putting the gear door on this side, ultimately it doesn't really matter, but there's no excess glue down here joining the, the structure to the fuselage. On this side, we've got a bunch of extra glue, um, so, in my mind, it just makes sense to, to hinge it on this side so you don't have to try and get in there and grind that all out. So what I've done is I've just put the, the gear back in. It's, it's just resting there, it's not screwed in because we got to get our, our gear door servo mounted. So these are all those things that you really, while well, you've got good access and I mean reasonable access, this is the time to do all this kind of stuff. So, you know, when we look at this plane build as a whole, we started from the back and worked our way forward. Now we're starting from the front or continuing from the front and working our way backwards. We're gonna meet right in the middle where all of our equipment goes. So anyways, um, I just need to figure out spacing and stuff on this, uh, this servo. What I'm probably gonna do is, is um, just make some, glue some wood pieces on going like this that we can screw that servo into. Um, that's gonna be sort of difficult because obviously you can't screw in like this. So I just gotta give that a bit more thought on how we're gonna make that, uh, that happen. The other option is we could mount the servo down here, which is also a possibility. That actually might work out even better so, yeah, I just need to check out our positioning of everything and see if that's actually gonna work. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, a hinge here, a hinge there, and probably have to do one in the front. Um, yeah, I need to figure all that stuff out, but that's probably gonna be a reasonable layout. It would be really nice to have it right here, actually, but I don't know how much more we have to open that up. So we could do that too, without having to put too much there. That might be the ticket, right? In that opening right there, I'd rather have the servo operating the middle hinge than the one all the way at the back. So I think I'm gonna explore that a little bit more. All right, so we've got our front door servo mounted. Now I only had to open that, uh, that opening in the former just a little bit to make that fit. So that worked out perfect. Drilling the, uh, the holes was a little bit of a challenge because the carbon kind of is slippery, but uh, that works out awesome. So I left the servo arm off, but we've got great geometry there for everything. So I was also playing around with the hinges a little bit. So we'll use our standard offset hinges. Um, now this is the way they come like that. So we have clipped the, uh, the back piece off, so that piece off, you can see there. And then also our uh, back mount here, or the fuselage side mount, uh, trim that back a little bit so we could tuck it over. So what happens here is if, if we leave this piece too long and the fuselage joint is right here, it kind of pushes the hinge out uh, too far, so what'll happen is the hinge won't work properly. So when you set these things up, if this is the fuselage door joint, 
You kind of need it pretty much centered like that, and that's the way they work best. Um, so anyways, that's uh, how we have things set up. And then this hinge here is basically going kind of right in that spot, right in that location. So, so we'll do one there, we'll do one close to the back here, and then one close to the front as well. So that is our door layup. That's awesome. So that worked out good. Um, I think we will probably get these guys glued in here and uh, we should be able to do that now. Um, I find the easiest way to glue these things in is put a little bit of high saw underneath the actual mount and get it in its location and then use a little bit of CA to uh, kind of hold it in place. I find that's the easiest thing to do. Uh, so once we get the fuselage side mounted, then getting the door side mounted will be a little bit tricky, but uh, obviously we'll have to make that work. Um, so that is our plan. All right, so we've got the hinges installed. Um, I'll show you guys a couple tricks with these hinges. So I have to be careful because they're just CA'd in place and the high saws curing um, or the aero epoxies curing. So one of the key things is you want your distance. So this distance right here, let's get trusty out to help out. So you want this distance right here to be bigger when the hinge is open. So um, I do need to do a little relief cut here, just a little slot for this to open up more. But this distance right here needs to be wider than this distance when it's closed. Now the reason for that is if you imagine this mounted on your door and if this distance ends up being shorter when this is open, your door is gonna touch the fuselage. So that's one of the keys with setting up uh, these offset hinges and they are fairly specific because if you take this hinge and move it towards the center line of the nose opening, what happens is when this opens, that becomes tighter. The further in the hinge is, the further away from the surface the, uh, the door will become. So usually what happens with this is on a scale plane, you've kind of got a, a recessed piece that the door sits against. Um, so usually in that recessed piece, there's a little vertical slot. And in this case, we're gonna put a little vertical slot in our fuselage just so this can open up more. Now the other key, this is gonna be a little hard to show you because I can't open them, but um, when you get them all installed, you want them all to line up like this. And I'm not gonna to touch that one, but you want them all to line up when it's all the way open. Um, so that's just one of the keys to, to align things. And then the other key is if we take a straight edge right now with them all closed and I run them across the center big holes, all of those holes line up perfectly. So now what happens is those hinges are gonna to work together when this door opens. If you get them in different positions, the hinges will fight each other and uh, it's gonna bend your door funny, it's gonna cause extra resistance. So you want that to get lined up as straight as possible. The other thing you can do if you have good access is you can put a piece of piano wire through all of the hinges because there's holes in there and that helps to get them all lined up as well too. In this case, we don't really have that option, but uh, that's an option sometimes you can use on scale aircraft. So now with those hinges done, we basically are gonna leave the front end alone. We took the gear out to put those hinges in and uh, that's it. So we just leave that thing alone and we'll tuck that, uh, that servo wire out of the way so it doesn't touch any of the wet glue and we just leave her be. So now what we'll do is we're gonna turn the uh, fuselage back level and we'll start working on the out, uh, outlay or layout of the, uh, the front tray. All right, so I'm just playing around with tray layout here. I got the UAT all assembled. Uh, these are fairly simple to assemble just making sure that you put your washers in there. They supply washers with O-rings on both sides. Put a little lubricant on the O-rings before you tighten them down and they'll seal well. So that's our layout for the UAT. And um, so that's kind of the primary locator on the front board. Everything's gonna be based around that. 
Now, in order to get the front board in and out, uh, we had to take the bung out of the main tank. So I disconnected the hose there, uh, took the bung out, and this hose should be okay to, uh, to, take, uh, to, to reattach to that fuel fitting because it's long enough to do so. But with the bung in there, there's no way to get the, um, the tray out unless we put a big notch in the tray, which um, is an idea, but if we don't have to, I'd rather not. So just kind of working on tray layout and equipment layout. So one consideration to keep in mind is with our lighting harness. Now our afterburner lights need a uh, two cell LiPo or 8.4 volts. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie it into the existing system because we do have that option available. So our lighting battery plugs in here and this feeds both sections of the wiring harness. So there's a switch on our battery lead coming to the harness. When we turn that switch on, all of our normal light system is gonna turn on. And this side here feeds the gear system. So that's the control for the gear system right here. And uh, that is all run through a Castle Creations BEC. Now our other lights that plug into our wing harnesses here, those have a BEC on each of the wings, which is fine, but we need to drop our 11.1 volts or three cell LiPo to two cell LiPo for the afterburner setup. So what I'm gonna do here is we've got an extra lead um, right here. And uh, this was basically an open one. And uh, we're gonna get the power for the afterburner setup from this lead right here, but we need to drop it down. So we need to add another uh, Castle Creations BEC into the system, which is fine. So that is how we're gonna wire the lights. This is all gonna be buried underneath the board. I'm not 100% sure yet, but our SBEC may be buried underneath the board, but I don't really want to do that because then we lose access to it. So uh, I'll probably leave this stuff on top of the board. And that is pretty much our equipment layout. And uh, the nice thing with using the REC setup with the Cortex setup is just the simplicity factor uh, versus having to try and fit another uh, central box 200 in the mix. Um, it's just gonna make things a little bit smaller. So just kind of getting stuff organized and uh, have to lay out the board and get our holes cut and stuff. Uh, while we had the gear mix uh, out and also had some epoxy mixed, I glued the nose gear light on the nose leg. So that is done, so we need to let that cure. So what we'll do is we'll pull the tray out now that we kind of know where things are sort of going and we'll start to get the, uh, the equipment laid out and make sure we're happy with it before we do any cutting. All right, so we are working on electronics here. So I just like to get everything laid out before we actually start putting it on the board, especially when we're dealing with stuff like the SBEC here, which um, this is the first time I'm actually using one. So it's, uh, it's kind of neat to have this set up and play with some programming. So the SBEC, uh, I'll, I guess I'll go over this. So the SBEC plugs into the EXT port on, in this case, the REX12. And then the SBEC also has two expander ports uh, for additional EXT ports. So in this case, our M-speed sensor plugs into the SBEC uh, EXT1 is where we're, uh, where we're putting it. So, um, so right now this is all working just like it should. Um, and with that, we've also got our telemetry all for the aspect. So I've, I've put these on the screen here. Uh, there is a couple more things, but we've got, uh, so our M speed, uh, actual speed readout, our aspect in voltage, our current, which is also a cool feature to see. So we can actually see that, um, how much it, everything's being drawn. Uh, the capacity as well too, which is nice. So that uh, obviously you can keep track of how much battery is being used. So in this case, if we're using a 4,000 milliamp battery, uh, we know when we're, uh, if, if, if we reset it at the beginning of the day, we know how far we are after two, three, four flights. And then we've got our output voltage there. Now, the only thing with capacity is this is gonna give us capacity through the SBEC, but this battery or our primary battery is, is also going to be feeding the turbine too. So it's a little bit skewed, but uh, it's some good information to know. So getting closer here to having the layout done, um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to put the Rex 12 on the side of the fuselage 
We're gonna put the S back on the other side of the fuselage, and that's pretty much the only way that we can have enough space on this tray to mount everything, because we've gotta put a battery here, and then our light battery has to go up here as well too. There's really nowhere else to put it. So um, anyways, we're getting closer to having a final tray layout. All right, so we've got our tray layout basically all finished here. So uh, what we do first is put our through fittings through, all the equipment's organized. Uh, now we've drilled uh, four holes for the UAT, three holes for the GS200 controller. So what we'll do is we'll put some plywood backing on the back side so we have something to screw into because this is uh, fiberglass and foam board. And uh, then we'll get all of our stuff mounted, just making progress on this beautiful front end. All right, we've made a little bit of progress here. I'll show you what we've done with the wiring system just to make things a little bit straightforward. Number one, everything is mounted to the board. That's, that's essentially gonna be mounted to the board. We still have spots here for two different batteries. So um, anyways, all the stuff's mounted to the board and we kind of have the, the general layout done. So what I did was I did a diagram up here more just to keep it straight in my head of how things are going. So we've got our three cell battery, which is three cell LiPo, which is going to power the uh, all the control systems on the aircraft, basically the entire aircraft except the lighting system, okay? So we've got the battery going to the plug, uh, the plug going to the ECU and SBEC, the power is split. And then from the SBEC, it's a regulated 8.4 volts. That comes to the GS200 and Rex12 to power the airplane. Okay, and then the ECU is getting straight three cell LiPo power. Our little three cell LiPo is going to go right into the lighting system. So here's how it looks on the plane. So if we're using this battery as an example, this is our primary control battery that gets plugged into this plug right here, which is our main plug. That plug, if you look on the other side, comes to this kind of bundle right here. So one of those leads comes to the SBEC. The other lead goes over there to the turbine plug-in power. So the reason I'm doing this the way I'm doing this is I'm trying to make this as serviceable as possible too. The last thing you want is having to pull this tray out and having to disconnect a bunch of things. So this SBEC, as an example, will be mounted to the side of the fuselage with Velcro, but if you take the tray out, you unvelcro the SBEC and it basically all comes with everything. Uh, there might be one plug for the uh, M-speed sensor, which we can, um, w which is gonna come off. So not, not a big deal at all. Um, and then our Rex 12 is gonna go on the other side. So if we do ever need to take this off, we just gotta take the plugs out of the Rex 12, that can stay mounted and the uh, tray comes off. So as serviceable as possible, I don't wanna be having to disconnect power leads and things like that. So that is the mentality behind everything we've done so far. So with this done, now we need to make our connection point between the SBEC and our GS200 and our Rex 12. So we'll make that power lead up. We're gonna use all these MPX connectors because that is what we've got plugging in with everything. All right, so earlier today, I put three layers of primer on the door pieces, and I'm just gonna show you the difference here of what we're looking at. So this is a piece that has the primer sprayed on it. I'll try and get the reflection. So when you look at that, you can still see all the weave through everything. And that's because the primer is covering everything. So we have a piece of wet dry thousand grit sandpaper and these three pieces, which are the left side, they've all been sanded. And the difference is, so we still have just a couple indents that we need to fill, but the primer is filling in the low spots and we're sanding away all the primer that's on the high spot. So we're getting a very, very smooth surface and that's kind of the goal. So we'll put two more layers of primer on these and uh, one more sanding job and then the outside surface will be pretty much uh, good to go. Uh, inside surface, not so worried about it, but uh, obviously we're gonna make it look decent as well too. So we still need to sand the other side but those look good. When I get these done sanding, I just shoot them with uh, a couple sprays of rubbing alcohol to get rid of all, any moisture and then wipe them off with a brand new tack cloth. All right, we're just uh, trying to get everything organized here as far as layout goes. Um, on a plane with a bunch of telemetry like this and stuff, 
our E ports or EX bus ports are quite valuable. So uh, what we're gonna do here is I'm just kind of moving stuff around while I'm programming the, uh, the vSpeak module for Jetty. So initially I had my gear bus uh, wire coming to this receiver in the E2, but we're gonna change that around and we're gonna have our turbine come to this, so E2. Uh, we're going to end up using the gray cable, so we're just using the vSpeak module as a telemetry sensor in this case. You can set these up two different ways, and uh, it's helpful to have a jetty box to do this. But what you can do is go to jetty telemetry, and you can set it up as EX bus or sensor. So if you set it up as EX bus, what happens is this gray cable, which is your throttle cable, is no longer used. So this cable right here, the black one, goes to an EX bus port. So that would be a programmable port on your Jetty receiver. Then the blue cable goes to your telemetry port on your ECU, and uh, there is no uh, throttle cable used on the PPM port. So in this case, it's the same type of idea. So this is gonna to go to the telemetry port and this goes to our sensor on our receiver, our E2 sensor, and then this one goes to the telemetry uh, plug-in on the radio. And for the vSpeak, there's two different manuals. There's a short little one that comes with the vSpeak, and then there's a really thick one that covers all the different radios setups and stuff. So this is how we're setting it up right here. So I guess we're using the Jetty Duplex sensor version. So here's exactly what I was talking about. Blue cable into telemetry, telemetry to telemetry, throttle to, or the gray wire to throttle. And that is how we are setting this aircraft up. So then what's gonna happen is our gear line right here. So our gear uh, signal line goes to uh, E2 on the second receiver, and then E1 is gonna be a receiver output port, and that's gonna go into the Cortex. So that is our E ports organized on this setup. And I forgot to mention when we were putting these guys in, but all these 3D parts guys are all available on our website. So if you check out the lighter side of rc.com, it's listed down below. Um, they're all listed on there. We've got a couple things we still need to add to the website, but uh, most of the stuff that we use in our builds is all there. You can order it, ships quickly. So check it out, the lighter side of rc.com. All right, and a uh, little shout out to David East. Thank you for suggesting that I go look at Andreas Leone's Facebook page. So he's one of the uh, factory pilots for, uh, for Hispano Aviation. He's got an ultimatum album on his Facebook page. And there's a couple tricks here that I picked up from uh, Mr. Leone's Facebook page. So thanks guys for pointing this out. So ultimately we made a little bit of a boo-boo, not a huge one, but uh, it's regarding the nose gear. And then we got a nice little tip for the back end. Let's take a look at those. Okay, so in previous video, I talked about having to shim the nose gear. Now this is the way the nose gear is supposed to be mounted. Um, it's a little bit different than normal. So you've got your former work in here. Generally, you're mounting your gear on the outside or bottom side of the former. In this case, you're actually installing it from the, the inside of the plane and bolting it down on top of the former work. So when we do this, uh, there's no need for shimming and all that kind of stuff. So that is uh, how it's supposed to be installed. So thank you for that. And then the other cool little tip here is uh, putting a little cutout in the back here. So we're going to make a nice little Dremel shape right there. Uh, this is not structural. I mean, there's, there's obviously the whole structure of the plane, but there's no form or work or anything like that. So we're just going to do a little opening right here, and that allows... Um, just hot air to escape, I guess. Now, one thing to think about with the pipe here, one of the comments that was made was, uh, because I put this afterburner ring on, it blocks all the air getting out of the fuselage. Well, we gotta remember that there is a vin venturi effect with the outer pipes. So yes, there was a couple holes in the former work right here that, um, there would possibly be air moving through there, but most of the air is gonna be coming out 
between the two layers of pipes. So in this case, we've blocked those holes off. Uh, maybe there's gonna be extra air coming out between the two pipes, which is definitely a positive thing, but what happens is the turbine exhaust comes out and because you're inset with the inner pipe, the Venturi effect pulls air from between the two layers of pipe. Now, if this outer layer of pipe was inset from the inside, uh, that wouldn't work. So that's the whole principle behind this. Um, the little cutout here is going to allow air to escape. Um, I guess one of the thoughts here is because this is all wide open into the rudder, uh, you, you could get heat coming up here. So that's going to be a, an area as well that pulls heat out from above the pipe. So cool little t uh, tip trick, whatever you want to call it. Uh, easy to add on that aircraft as well. So a couple little hints and tidbits. All right, so we cut out the, uh, the first outside piece of the nose gear door and we've done the inside. Now the inside we've done it with uh, two layers of heavy carbon cloth. So I think that's six ounce carbon cloth. So the point of that is to stiffen the nose door up because it's so long. Um, so I've already done that, epoxied it. I'm just gonna put the, uh, the other layer of uh, parchment paper down and uh, put a layer of foam over top and then we're going to uh, put some weight on top of it as well to uh, help squish it down. Then both sides of the nose gear door will be done once that cures. All right, so I'm pretty sure we're done with our tray layout here. I've got, I think, as much uh, done in advance as I can, so I think we're good. The only last thing we need to do is put our two Velcro strips down, uh, put um, some slots here in the, in the plate, to strap our batteries down. That's gonna be the only thing left to do, but I think our tray is good to go. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to plug in, to come through the board, all that kind of stuff. Now, with the, the landing gear going in from the top, we can't actually put the landing gear in until the tray goes in. And the reason for that is the landing gear comes back into the tray area. So you essentially need to leave the landing gear like this, um, just undone, and then we'll uh, put the tray in and then get the landing gear set in place. So we've got a few more wires to finish up here. So these are all the wires from the tail and then our power for our afterburner lights is right there. So we're gonna get those leads put on and um, then I think we're ready to put the board in. Uh, we got our on off valve set up here. I had some extra epoxy, so that's where we put it. And uh, the line is run down to the turbine. Of course, we've got our sweet wind filter in there. So that's uh, pretty straightforward. Good location, nice and easy to access. Still lots of room with the canopy as well too. The canopy floats quite a, quite a ways above that. And last thing we did here, there's a little bit of cleanup to do on the foam inside the, uh, the fuselage there and stuff, but uh, that's the hole in the back side. Again, this matches uh, Andres Leone's uh, setup here. So obviously if you're cooking along, especially on this aircraft, you're gonna have all the gear doors, while well, the front one really is the only one that matters. The front one's gonna be closed, sealed up, so the air is gonna be coming in the inlets. The faster you go, the more air is gonna be forced in, so most of that air is gonna be coming out of the pipe. That's gonna also venturi between the two layers of pipes, and then any excess force in the fuselage is gonna come out that hole. So um, yeah, that's the, that's the ultimate goal of uh, why we did all that stuff. So let's finish up that wiring and we can possibly get the plate installed. All right, so we pulled the gear back out and installed some spiral wrap for the nose light. Uh, the other thing we're doing is we're changing out the mounting hardware to blind nuts. So we've drilled out the holes and uh, we're gonna go with three millimeter blind nuts. And that just makes more sense in this case because the fasteners are holding all of the force with the nose. We could probably get away with wood screws, but uh, we're going to, uh, to use blind nuts because in this situation, it kind of makes more sense. So uh, we need to get this nose gear sorted out so we can run the wire for the nose light underneath the board. That's kind of the critical one because there's no way to plug it into the harness. That's gonna be underneath the board. So, okay, so we've got our tray all set over here so we could plug our landing gear in to operate it. Uh, we've got our second receiver uh, put into the system. So that's all good as well too. Change the Cortex to be a two receiver system. So now it's getting a signal from 
uh, the primary receiver and the secondary receiver. And we also verified that if we take the primary receiver offline, the secondary receiver still runs everything and vice versa. So that is all good. We've got our, our plan laid out there for the, uh, for the tray. Um, we got the front landing gear all reinstalled with blind nuts. Now that will, that'll have to come back out. So it's, it's not permanent now, but that, is awesome. So a couple things on the underside here. Uh, number one, our line for the uh, the nose light, which is wrapped in spiral wrap, just goes through the former work there. And now it uh, is able to move nice and freely. So that is good. And uh, then the other thing we did was we put our little notches in the, uh, the hinge points here for the gear door. So what that does is instead of the door opening I don't know, 75 degrees because it hits the fuselage. Now the door will be able to open up to 90, to actually pass 90, but um, now these hinges are unimpeded. And here is a shot of the front landing gear. Working like a charm, that's beautiful. Awesome. So we are basically ready to reinstall or install that front board. But with that, we are going to call that the end of this episode. Uh, we are making some, obviously some great progress. Let's do this here. Oh yeah. Ooh, look at that. So front board is ready to go in. This was a pretty big step in this video. Um, getting all this stuff laid out and fit on this thing is definitely a bit of a challenge, but we're making it happen. So yeah, so that mess is ready to install and uh, there's not a whole lot left to do. A lot of it's gonna center around the gear doors and uh, getting the final steps done on this aircraft. So it's gonna be an interesting last video. Um, basically what we're doing is gear doors primary, um, all of the installation of the, the front end here and equipment finished. So that's number two. Uh, we're gonna do engine test runs and setup and final adjustments on the aircraft. One video left, we will wrap up the entire build in the last video. It's uh, definitely gonna be a good one. This is a very beautiful aircraft. Absolutely love putting this thing and have loved putting this thing together. Uh, it's a real treat for sure. So we've got a few other videos coming up uh, before we finish up this one, but that will allow us lots of time to go through all of the gear door installation process, which is going to be fairly lengthy because we still have to finish sanding them. We have to prime them. We have to paint them. We have to get them installed and hinged and all that kind of stuff. So last video on the ultimatum, basically about gear doors. So thanks guys for tuning into my videos. Very much appreciated. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to link them down below. Thank you to the supporters of the channel, uh, whether it's through Patreon or just positive comments or whatever it is. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, and thanks for watching the videos ultimately. Um, that's it guys, we'll see you in the next video.